I'd uh, like to call the Dixie County Commission regular meeting to order February 1st, 2018. Please stand for the flag salute. Aye. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Approval of the agenda with no additions. I'll make that motion. Second. And moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda. Minutes of the January 25th meeting. Fund expenditures of 2017, $11,891.43. Fund expenditures for 2018 of $226,874.74. Abatements of $6,700. $79.28 and wire payment for utilities of $12,199.68. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Commissioner Comments, Lynn. Uh, this past week I have attended some meetings at Topeka uh, for Kansas State Club. We also had a KAC board. Um, and a reception had an opportunity to visit with uh, some of the legislators and just get a little bit of an idea of how the session was going and was, um, good to have that communication. And then last night, along with Brad and the other two commissioners, I was in attendance at Council Grove for a regional meeting that uh, involved mostly county commission uh, members from other surrounding counties. And it was helpful just to kind of have an exchange of ideas. And that's all I have, uh, other than... Um, Super Bowl prediction, Philadelphia, just in case. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Warren? Yes, uh, I'll make a few more comments about our regional county commission uh, meeting last night over at, at, at uh, Council Grove. Uh, like I said, we got that started. Actually, we were the county that was responsible for getting that started because we uh, felt like it would be good to visit with the county commissioners from counties that, that surround our borders and uh, like I say it has turned out to be a very productive meetings that we have and and we've been able to share information and actually save counties by being able to uh, participate and uh, serve like I say some of our needs we've been able to uh, work with the other counties and and uh, Corporation and, and get lower prices on on some of our service. So, uh, like I say, it's always, I feel like, a good meeting. And it seems like every meeting we pick up one idea from another county that that uh, has helped us. So, that it's uh, just, uh, I'm glad that we're able to keep keep those meetings going. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah, yesterday I went out to Hayes with the Extension Board. Uh, to the agents and our uh, extension president, we went out there from we were there from got there at nine and left at three and, and I went to Council Grove. So was in several counties yesterday. Uh, our work session, uh, Treasurer Lee Hearn was in and gave kind of an update on her uh, what's going on in her department. Uh, no uh, presentation or proclamations. We have anybody who wants to make any comment, comments about anything that's not on the agenda? If not, Brad, do you want to give your report? Very brief today. Uh, we've got the Chamber of Commerce Bank coming up here in Ampling on the 27th. We'll talk about that in the Tri-County on the 12th in Harrington. And uh, then I've got the staffing reports for here today, though, that were not in your packets or should have been. Uh, we've only had two changes so far this year only. But uh, other than that, I don't have anything until we get to the security. Thank you, Brad. Doug, do you have anything? Uh, tax sale comes up Monday. We're ready to go. About 20, 21 parcels, perhaps. Doug, okay. where do you do those? Okay. Where do you do those? Uh, right down here. Okay, in case we don't need to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, moving on to notices of communications, uh, we got an email from uh, Reginald Tittle about some issues out on Jeep Road and the traffic problems that's out there. Uh, the letter from Polson's uh, 
S I E F K I N. Uh, they are changing uh, Folsom Chicken representation of the Kansas Station of counties. Uh, the Attorney General, Attorney General asked Toby Course to serve as Solicitor General for the state of Kansas. Um, he's going to be resigning, going to go part time to the state, but they will still be representing K Camp, which is our uh, liability insurance. Uh, got a letter from the Thomas United Methodist Church. I'll read it probably in entirety uh, to Dixon County Commissioners of Dixon County because Talmadge is an unincorporated town in Dixon County. It makes some situations powerless for any kind of monitoring as well as difficulty to penalize. On the east edge of town sits the Talmadge United Methodist Church. It's a beautiful building that observed its 100th anniversary of the structure itself. The small congregation has worked hard to maintain the large church building as well as a rural church entities continuing to strive to achieve some growth in its attendance numbers. With all this stated, we find it difficult watching the property across the street to the south and becomes more and more infested with the mounting increase of trash, junk vehicles, and traders that are parked along and around the perimeter of the property and spilling onto the roadway in the church parking lot. Often it seems possible to back out of the church without concern of backing onto one of the vehicles or trailers. For a while, great strides were made in remedying the heap of rubble and debris that had been accumulating on the property, but that, long, that occupant no longer resides there, and the property owner is once again hauling in loads of junk. There are still piles of old tires that have been on the site for years. Please advise us how to possibly proceed in finding some help for this problem. During the past several years, many complaints have been lodged by the Talmadge residents, but it seems another one of those areas where a suggested solution is not law. So nothing is legally enforceable. Thank you for any time and attention that can be extended, extended through the county. I'll pass that over to you, Brad. Uh, Dixon County Conservation lunch or dinner. Uh, we got an invitation to that. Yes. You all got those? Yeah, I'm fine to attend. Okay. Uh, got a letter from, and I'm not sure what this is, a seminal payment due uh, between the county and the Kansas Department of Health and Environment purpose of this letter informing that the repayment owed on March 1st, 2018 is $8,568.35. What, what is that for? Sewer district number two. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's the next letter here that says, yeah. Uh, got a couple of deals from North Central Regional Planning Commission, a legislative conference in Washington, D.C. And then we got, I think we all got the invitation to the Chamber Banquet in Abilene. Yes. Okay. That's all. All the notice and communications. And we are members of the Abilene Area Chamber, but also uh, Tri-County down at Harrington. So, okay, I've got the bar. Uh, introduction, considered resolutions, none. Unfinished business, none. Uh, the other business, the only thing we have is review, consideration, agreement for the security guard service for the courthouse. Brad? Okay, last week I presented you a uh, sheet that showed uh, some numbers and costs. It came about as a result of a couple incidents that we had again uh, with dealing with security in the courthouse. And I won't go into all those details, you're, you're familiar with those. So, uh, essentially, what it comes down to is uh, whether or not we want to uh, initiate putting armed security guards at the entrance to the courthouse or not. To to, it, to follow state statute and be able to make the courthouse weapons free. Um, and as you're aware, the statute uh, states that if we're going to prevent people from carrying weapons, specifically guns, into the courthouse, either open or concealed carry, we have to provide them a safe environment. And by doing that, we would need to put metal detectors and staff at the front entrances. So. Uh, the sheet that I provided you last week, I gave you another copy this week because I didn't know whether Lynn still had his or got his. Uh, showing the cost, the initial cost to put the hardware, which would include a, a walk-through metal detector and a hand wand, a computer with the security <coughs> cameras, desk, uh, telephone, weapons lockbox, uh, etc., would be about $6,300 one-time cost. Uh, that's much lower than I anticipated it would be years ago for just the metal detector alone, because I think years ago, and I'm talking 10 years ago, when we priced that, those were like eighty or $90,000. So 
Uh, they've come down considerably through technology changes. And then the two options we would have if you choose to do this is to go with a private security firm, which would provide us two armed security guards at the front door at all times while during business hours when we're open. Uh, or to hire two additional people, most probably we would have to hire three so that you can fill the, the voids when somebody's sick or, or needs off or what have you. Uh, and make them county employees. And as you can see by the numbers, the cost to contract with the company out of Salina and getting a price from them would be would equate to ninety one thousand ninety one six thirty two a year uh, for forty hour weeks, uh, taking into consideration the holidays when we're closed and such. If we were to hire two people alone, would be one hundred twelve thousand uh, as county employees. And then that doesn't take into consideration the extra, the third person you may need to fill in. One of the real benefits of contracting, it besides the lesser cost, is if they have one of their staff members are sick or needs off work or for whatever reason can't make it to work, they would fill that, that open void to make sure there's two people here by pulling from another location or another, another somebody else within their company. So I see that as a real benefit. but. Uh, at this point, we've, you know, in talking to Janelle, we've got the money to do it. If you so choose to move forward, the question is whether or not it's time to do it. And that's been the, the mm -hmm. proverbial question for many years. Uh, my opinion is, I think, you know, much like we talked about last night, and it was kind of, a, I think, more than coincidental that one of the other counties that are meeting brought up the fact that we want to know what other counties were doing about courthouse security because they're having issues and they really need to do something. So. Uh, it's not a problem that's just here, but I think times have changed, and I think the time is here that we really need to, to look at something, so for what it's worth. Thank you, Brad. Any public comments? I have a question. Cindy, yeah. um, Go ahead and stand up and, and say what your name is, Cindy, please. No problem. Cindy McDonald, clerk of the district court. Are they talking about right here in the opening of? In the foyer. Yes. Okay. That's true, right? One thing, if we could consider and it's not anything immediately, but when we have large dockets or jury trials, we could have up to 50 or 60 people show up. I'm just concerned about the public being out in the open air if it's bad weather. So I didn't know if there's any talk about maybe closing further out. I hadn't talked about that yet. Yeah. I think we just have to play it by Get here. to the, yeah, that's just one thing I wanted to throw in there if we're talking about cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would be, well, <coughs> rather than putting something heated, just put a cover there if it was you know, exactly. And, so and out of the elements, at least. It's not that often yeah. that it happens, but Andre, correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes on juvenile docket day, we could have up to 60 people, probably. And, and the problem is yeah. they all show up at the same time. Yes. Um, but along the security issues, I can tell you that a couple weeks ago, we had a civil jury trial. And at that time, we had at least 80 jurors in the hallway. We had juvenile docket day, so we probably had 50 people from that docket. If there was anyone who could have came into the courthouse at that time, all of those people would have been exposed to a security risk. So it's not just staff that we're concerned about, it's mainly the public. Thanks, Cindy. Any other comments? Uh, yes, Judge. Ben Sexton, Judge of the District Court. I, I want to thank Brad for being proactive on this. Um, you know, all you have to do is just look out in our society today and everything is so emotional and ramped up um, that I think now is a good time. I and mean, we've had a U.S. Marshals report, I think, twice mm -hmm. since I've been on the bench. And each time that U.S. Marshals report has suggested and requested that this be done. So um, I thank you for the consideration. And Cindy's exactly right. Um, it, it's, it's not just staff and it's not just the people who work here. It's everybody else out in that hallway. Mm -hmm. The kids, the mothers, the fathers, everybody. Very concerning. You know, I told my you know we have a we have a case that's being heard this afternoon on a first appearance. You know, the allegations are very substantial. And I told my wife, I'm said and I, last night I said, you know, a person could walk into that courtroom with a machine gun under their coat and we wouldn't have a clue they were sitting there. Um, it's not just criminal cases, domestic too, but I appreciate the consideration. And the judge Andre, uh, Andre Purvis, Thank county you. attorney. The judge basically expressed my feelings as well. We do have cases that are pending, and it isn't just 
that I'm afraid, but that we have a courtroom full of people for other things that would be at risk as well. So. Thank you, Andre. Any other comments? Oh, so Freeman Register Deeds, um, I think it's an excellent idea. You know, we're all out in the open. There's always customers in there, and it just takes one time for something really bad to happen. And this would fix it, and it wouldn't be too much of an expense, I don't think. So. Thank you, Jill. Any other comments? Uh, what's the time of the timeline, Brad? I mean, why we we're running talking here? to the contractor. Uh, they thought by March 1st they could have people in place. Mm. So about 30 days. Okay. So, I, I, of course, I don't know. Right. I'm assuming we can get hardware yeah, in place that, by then. If we, uh, we may be the hold up rather than that. We could be the hold up, but if we if it's approved and we order things right away, well, I'll know for sure more. This afternoon in the morning yeah. so. so there's not that much wiring out there to do to no that. we can get the wiring done and, yeah. and i've already talked to, to seth about yeah. that that's not a problem it would be the metal detector probably be the big hold up well i appreciate the concern um mm -hmm. and comments uh, i think on anything we look at risk assessment and and safety and Probably like many of you, I've attended sporting events, for example, you know, whether it's the Kansas City Royals or Chiefs or the universities. And at those venues, they have a very efficient way of walking through and they check purses, you go through a detector, um, you know, it's just a matter of taking out your cell phone, putting it in a dish or whatever. But, but they move people through effectively and, you know, those events, Probably nothing has happened that I'm aware of, um, but yet it's it's kind of that safety net. Um, and when you consider what other counties are doing and places, um, you know we aren't at the front edge of this, but we certainly don't want to be the last ones to to respond. And, um, I, I'm a gun gun owner myself. I mean, I own a few guns. Um, and so I realize the rights that people have uh, in that regard. Um, but I don't think this is an overreach. I just think it's a matter of this is where we are with our society right now. And it's the right thing to do just to protect the public and, um, and help, you know, keep this a safe and secure building. Yes, I, I feel the same way. It's like I've sat here for seven years, you know, and we've talked about it probably for the last five or six years, you know, that, and it kind of got spurred when the legislature changed the law and, and concealed carry is much easier now for people to have, and, and it's just, uh, like I say, and I think the emphasis that the, the people have expressed, you know, it it's not only security for the people that work here, it's security for the people that that are here on business and and are in court or whatever so you know that that is that is a and i think we're fortunate that we do have a courthouse set up so that we got <coughs> one entrance that we can bring people through because uh some of the people from the other counties last night were talking like sling county said well we got seven entrances you know and you'd have to have either close some of those or you couldn't afford to have people at all seven entrances, but the way we've done the, the doors on the end, the staff is, can code and come in, and, and uh, so we, the way it's set up, I think we're fortunate that we got, and like I say, hopefully we can find enough space there that we don't hold up people too long. And uh, like you say, but like Lynn says, you know, that comes down to the efficient, how efficient they are in moving the people through and like you say, some of these big sporting events, there's big numbers that come through in a short period of time. So hopefully that won't be a problem, but it, you know, if we see that is a problem, well, maybe on court days, you know, if that's a problem, you know, we could actually Maybe contract an extra staff person, you think, on oh, we can, yeah. some days that we know that we're going to have a huge amount of people come in at one time just to uh, get them through faster. But uh, that's something that we could look at 
and just see how that works out. Well, I think once the word gets out that there's a little bit of a, don't want to refer it really as a bottleneck, but maybe it is to a degree. You know, once they learn that, they'll know maybe to show up a little bit early or, or, or we can make adjustments to handle that. <clears throat> Any other discussion? If not, I'll call for the motion. I move that we uh, proceed ahead with the courthouse security and and go with the uh, firm that uh, Brad has contacted with with the uh, to do the uh, monitoring at the security at the front door. Second. And moved and seconded. What is the name of the company, Brad? First Choice Security. Okay. Thank you. No other discussion. I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Nothing else on the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We stand adjourned. Thank you.